last case uh, for contracts for tonight, but there will be a lot more. Oh, no, sorry, I was wrong. I have two more. <laughs> this one's pretty easy. Beaver versus Brumlow. This guy promises to sell land to an employee. The employee has been living on the land for years and has been improving it, and he's been paying rent, lease, mortgage money which is to say he's been paying his employer some amount of money, which is not clear what it's for. He thinks that it's to pay for the land over time, right? Like a mortgage. He ends up leaving the company, and in brutal vengeance, the man says, nope, get off my land. Um, well, oops, big thing to note, this guy forgot. Partial performance is an exception to the statute of frauds. Everyone repeat after me. Partial performance is an exception to the statute of frauds. When you partially perform on a contract, the contract is assumed to exist. You don't need to write it down for that to exist. Don't perform on contracts you don't intend to follow up on. You'll have a problem. So, um, what ends up happening here is that... The court says, well, look, he was improving the land. You were clearly going to sell it to him. He spent $85,000 improving the land. Yes, right? So, right? Oops, okay, sorry. So, yeah. He, he, you clearly partially performed. You were letting him live there, right? You were letting him pay you money. You can't just say it's rent now. Um, so, right... The part of the exception, right, does this exception does not mean that the action could not mean anything else, right? So what is that to say is to say, you know, he's saying it was rent. Court says it doesn't matter, okay? He's saying there was a contract. You were acting like there was a contract. Why else would he be spending $85,000 to improve property he's renting? An outsider looking in thinking that's what it's for is enough, right? A reasonable person looking at the whole of the facts would go, obviously. What are you talking about? He's improving that land because he intends to live there because you're letting him live there. And you intend to let him live there long term. $85,000 is enough to buy a house in some places. And at the time of this contract? Yeah, definitely. Um, right? There's no test for this exception, right? The case needs to be looked at in whole. This is very important. The court wants to be clear. No test. There's not a test. You just look at the case in whole and you go, yeah, partial performance here. It's pretty obvious. Yeah, right? So... A contract for land purchase is not void for lack of a price. That's the other thing. If there's been a transfer of possession, that's another important thing to know, right? When there has been a transfer of possession, price doesn't matter. You don't have to have it. When you've already handed over the land, you're like, oh, but he hasn't paid me for it yet. And I, I didn't tell him a price, so it doesn't matter. You're going to have to take fair market value in that case. The court's going to take you to fair market value, right? And um, there's also... Um, Yeah, sorry. So generally speaking, right, if you're going to court and you've already partially performed a contract, you're in trouble. But yeah. So again, big things to note. Part performance is an exception to the statute of frauds, and you don't need to have price in a real estate deal settled if you've already transferred the property over. The court will go find a number and make them pay you that, or at least give you the option to pay that. All right, and I believe that should be it for Beaver B. Brumlow.